Coming up on the FRC Open Alliance Show, 9642 INT Robotics is back to showcase their progress. They decided to do a total overhaul on their elevator and, and pivot away, well, really to stationary from pivot on that. We'll be diving more into their CAD and what that looks like, breaking down some of their systems and sensors, and then showcasing off uh, how their shooter is going to be working and also some of their machining, especially with their elevator and how it's all going to come together. Uh, so it's coming up quick. We can't wait to see this team compete in three regionals this year. Let's learn more about their progress here on the FRC Open Alliance show. This video on fun is brought to you by our viewers, supporters, members, and also in partnership with the following. Animark provides superior service with the reliability that teams expect. Check out their sport gearbox and ratchet sport options to their tried and true compliant wheels used by teams all over the world. From mechanical and electrical products to tools and hardware, head on over to animark.com for your one-stop shop of high quality and affordable solutions. Osh Cut is a premier metal cutting service for first teams. No minimum order, options for same day turnaround, guaranteed lead times, and instant online quotes. Osh Cut is offering first teams 50% off any future order up to $200 when you scan the QR code or go to funrobotics.network.com slash O-S-H-C-U-T. Just upload a 3D model or flat pattern to get started. Let's welcome back onto the FRC Open Alliance Show 9642. INT Robotics coming in from New York. It's so great to have you uh, back again and to check in with your progress. I know we got a lot of stuff to, to talk about, some changes that you've been making as well, too. So if you don't mind, can you introduce yourselves, let us know what you do on the team, then we're going to hop right in uh, to this design overhaul you've been working on. Yeah, so my name is Darius. I'm one of the co-captains. I'm lead of programming electrical, but these past few days I've been doing a lot of machining too. Uh, hi, I'm Eric. Uh, I do a lot of CAD work and I'm the design and mechanical lead for INT Robotics. I'm Kim. I tend to do a lot of strategy and I also help with design and desi um, making mechanisms on the robot. All right, so let's jump right into uh, some of these design changes you've been making. Why did you go about making them? And let's break down that a little bit more. Okay, so the biggest change we made from the first time uh, we were on here is that our elevator no longer pivots. Thank God, it is a stationary elevator. And the reason why we even had to pivot in the first place is because we thought simplicity came from one mechanism doing everything. Uh, that really wasn't the case. It just made uh, the complexity of that one mechanism like amplified. And because also that's how we, we thought that, that was the only way that we'd be able to effectively package a deep climb into a robot that would be able to do essentially like everything. Uh, I like scoring L1 to L4, scoring in the barge, uh, ground take, uh, ground pickup. But as we'll cover over later, we have uh, other mechanisms that can now compensate for that. So now we want to have the most, we want to have our main mechanism, uh, the elevator, be the most reliable as possible. And we decided that a full width uh, stationary elevator would be the best way to do that. And so Eric can go into detail about <laughs> our pretty much fully custom uh, belted elevator. Yeah, absolutely. Thanks, Darius. Um, so regarding our belted elevator, um, the kind of how it works is still the same as last time, except as Darius said, we've gone full width. Um, and the reason for this was we were kind of facing two problems at the time. Um, one, uh, the carriage was kind of too small and we, we were going to, we were kind of questioning whether the coral could actually fit through that gap. And second of all, we were actually having trouble finding way to like stably mount the elevator onto a robot. And by making a full width, we're able to kind of rest the stage on the kind of chassis railings. So by going full width, we saw, we killed two birds with one stone um, by allowing, giving us more room for coral to fit through the middle, as well as having more stability. And w regarding the elevator, um, before Darius talked about how we were gonna try to package climb with the elevator. And this is our old master sketch where we tried to maybe have some sort of intake on our elevator that would kind of lift our robot up so that we can sh um, shallow climb. Um, however, we have changed that and Kimberly can go in, um, into our climber. Yeah, so now that we're no longer like, climbing with our elevator, we actually had to make a dedicated mechanism. So on the edge of our robot right here, we have a climber that actually uses a C channel right at the end that would grab the top ledge of the cage that hangs and it'll pull it all the way into the robot and turn it like a lot. Um, we took a lot of inspiration from a lot of open alliance teams that have been posting their progress and prototypes with the, their climbers. And we realized that, you know, climber did not have to be that complicated. You could just have a C channel at the end have a lot of torque and then you can just pull that cage right in um and then the issue of that though was that this climber takes up a lot of vertical space so we wanted to integrate our funnel with it somehow and we actually took inspiration from mechanical advantage about this they um they made their funnel and climber coaxial so we decided that this would also help us package our robot better and we did the same thing so right here our green belts that you can see in the middle um they're actually on the same axle as the climber but they're dead axles 
So when the climber turns, the DAO stays still, and then the funnel can run independently of the climber and send the coral to the shooter. What kind of motors are you uh, looking at using for your uh, climber, and or what kind of gearing for that? Uh, so our climber is using a Kraken, and right now we're looking at an 18 to 1 ratio for uh, the entire robot. Shooter. Um, so kind of building off Kimberly, um, the funnel system, um, we did take inspiration from Mechanical Avenge, and I think these conveyor belts definitely help ex the process of getting our coral from the human player station into our shooter, which is what I want to cover next. Um, I know in our last um, open alliance, we didn't really have a shooter, but looking at some designs, we figured we were going to go with like um, a shooter that had vertical wheels. Um, there wasn't necessarily um, a pre preference over like vertical or horizontal, but with our prototype um, here, uh, we figured we kind of tested play around with it and we figured that this configuration worked pretty well, um, where kind of like the wheels would roll. Let's get this. Like. So I know uh, the solution is a bit jank, but as you can see, um, what we were really trying to go for is I wanted to go with a static shooter because uh, we've seen uh, some ideas from not only just open online teams, but people who are prototyping it uh, just out on the wild YouTube and uh, whatnot uh, about having a pivoting mechanism. I know that, for example, the West Coast competitive concept is uh, like their claw is pivoting, but we decided that we didn't really want to tamper too much with our main uh, means of scoring, especially for things like autonomous and for repeatable and reliable cycles. Uh, we wanted to make sure that it was, uh, if we also have a stationary elevator, we also want the shooter uh, to be static and stationary. And as you can see from that video, the angle that we have over there uh, works out pretty well. This prototype uh, was just like dummy poly, uh, like laser cut uh, on our laser cutter. But what we actually have here in the CAD, uh, we not only do we have pocketing, but we also have the support for our can range. That's gonna be our time of flight sensor that will actually tell us uh, when the coral is inside of the shooter. Um, for automation for during teleop or autonomous. And also, as you can see here, uh, with the way that we have it belted, it'll also add support um, so we can hopefully uh, try to minimize the amount of motors that we can have because uh, instead of having like three motors, uh, one for the shooter, one for the algae intake, and one to pivot the algae intake, I want to see if we could try to cram one motor that runs uh, both the belts for the wheels uh, of the shooter and the algae intake and just another motor for pivoting. So that way we sort of reduce the amount of weight that's on the carriage. So we're not like too top heavy when we extend our score on the barge. As a matter of fact, um, we were talking about this last night, even though we have a set of uh, wheels up here, I think what we might end up doing is changing these to like um, dead axles, like uh, just rollers, uh, plastic rollers to save on weight because we really don't wanna, um, I, we think so far we're good on weight, but if we were to add any weight, I'd rather it be towards the bottom of the robot and not like at the very tippy top. So looking at this uh, shooter that you have here, you mentioned it's not going to have a pivot on it, right? So are you just looking at L1 through L3 coral, or is there a potential for your team to get L4 still? For sure, a potential to get um, L4. Uh, I'm pretty sure uh, we don't we don't have a video of this coupled uh, with what we sent you, but we had uh, we tested it at L4, and it went in. I think the only thing that we'd have to take into consideration, I guess more from the programming side, is that – uh, either the distance that we, uh, the amount of distance that our chassis bumper is away from actually the fender of the reef, uh, that will probably have to change like a slight, a slight amount. Because when I see people who have a sort of similar angle to our static shooter fail at L4, it's basically they shoot it and it sort of gets stuck, uh, stuck there in between, uh, being wedged between the actual branch of the reef and the robot. So I think you just need to allow your robot to have some more space to actually like shoot it out, so it can like um, have the liberty to fall down the reef without getting stuck on your shooter. Yeah, we actually, uh, I recall that when we were filming Crammy Alarm, they had the same issue with that uh, early on as well, too. So I, I agree. I think with the right tuning, you can get something like that uh, happening quite well. So I look forward to seeing, you know, what your team does for that tuning. Uh, and, of course, uh, of course, some updates on, on what that looks like as well, too. But that's that's really cool. Where are you at uh, in terms of, uh, of manufacturing? So I know you made that big change, right? And you got a couple things uh, manufactured. Where's kind of your next steps for that? Oh yeah, so these past few days I've been going uh, crazy on the CNC machine. Um, but we have right now, we have all six Versas uh, that comprise the whole three-stage elevator machine. Uh, I just took one off, I took one away from the hands of the assembly crew uh, just to show it off right here. We have um, weight-saving uh, weight patterns all across. We added some space so the bearings can actually roll in it because we didn't really uh, want them to go over uh, open gaps. We have the mounting holes for our quarter-inch plate that will attach it from the chassis to the elevator. And... We have all the bearing blocks attached. It's just a matter of like congruency and actually putting uh, stage one to stage two to stage three, et cetera. But everything 
uh, that we need for the elevator itself is manufactured. Uh, the chassis is all assembled. It's in place. I think uh, what the goals are for this week moving into the weekend is just physically putting every mechanism uh, onto the robot. Because right now, even as we speak, the uh, plates for the funnel is being cut. Uh, the shooter just got done pocketing. It's just a matter of wrapping things up and fully assembling them. So before we wrap up uh, on here, I do want to ask you about, from a programming side of things, like what is your team looking at doing for autonomous? Are there any automation uh, capabilities during teleop you're looking at doing? Can you break down a little bit of that for us? Oh, uh, yeah. So, Eric, if you could go back to the master sketch uh, the assembly. Uh, so, yeah. So we want to have one camera, one camera that I think is going to be crucial and we actually accounted for in terms of making space. Um, right beneath the shooter, uh, we're going to want to have a plate that's going to have a limelight for um, we're going to have, uh, we're pretty sure we bought fans. We want, cause we've heard a lot of teams having, uh, overheating issues with their line, like four, um, we bought a heat sink and a fan, uh, to see if that could help. Uh, if not, then we're just going to have an aluminum plated, uh, just, uh, an aluminum plated, uh, plate at the back of the line, like to sort of dissipate the heat. Cause we've seen, uh, we've heard that for some people that that's worked. And so that's going to be our bread and butter go-to because in terms of localization, what we're going to do, I think better than just aligning to the uh, April tag, because that might be a little bit of a jank solution. If, you know, for a split second, you sort of lose sight of it. Uh, we're always going to have it looking at an April tag, since we also want to have uh, two Ardu cams. I think uh, the best place for us to mount them would probably be on the, these two vertical struts over here um, that actually support, that sort of double as climber and funnel support. On these sides, we're going to make mounting holes for the cameras. So the idea is that with a three camera system, we almost always look at an April tag. So we know our position. So instead of aligning to it just by doing like simple PID to the uh, April tag, I'd rather just make um, the same Pathfinder routines uh, and trajectories that we're going to use during autonomous. We can just generate one of them on the fly during teleop. I'd rather go towards those, which would be more consistent for like automating like scoring cycles uh, like to the human PlayStation and back. Well, Darius, uh, Eric, and Kimberly, I really wish uh, INT Robotics the best as you go on. You're now competing in three regionals coming up uh, very quickly, I know. Uh, so I know you're going to be uh, wanting to get back to work. We're going to let you do that. We can't wait to keep following your progress as well, too. So thanks a lot. Good luck the rest of the way, and we can't wait to see what you turn out. Thanks a lot. Thanks, Tyler. Osh Cut is a premier metal cutting service for first teams. No minimum order, options for same day turnaround, guaranteed lead times, and instant online quotes. Osh Cut is offering first teams 50% off any future order up to $200 when you scan the QR code or go to funroboticsnetwork.com slash OSHCUT. Just upload a 3D model or flat pattern to get started. Animark provides superior service with the reliability that teams expect. Check out their sport gearbox and ratchet sport options to their tried and true compliant wheels used by teams all over the world. From mechanical and electrical products to tools and hardware, head on over to animark.com for your one-stop shop of high quality and affordable solutions.